I'm Kath, welcome to my channel Made by Kath Craft and thank you very much for joining me for episode 6 of my midweek sewing chat. It's really nice to be back here again, I feel like this last week has gone really fast and it doesn't seem like long since I was recording last week's midweek sewing chat. I think it's because it's coming up to half term for my children, they're on holiday from school next week and I always find as we start approaching half term time seems to go a bit faster but anyway it's Tuesday morning today, Tuesday the 15th of February and it's quite a rainy day outside today so it's a nice day to be inside and maybe do a little bit of sewing. So I thought I'd pop on and share what I'm wearing, what I've been up to on the sewing front and a few sewing plans for over half term too. So first of all what I'm wearing, well yesterday was Monday the 14th of February so it's Valentine's Day so it inspired me to get one of my Valentine's sort of themed garments out. Um, so I thought I'd share that as well. And then today I went for another Valentine's themed outfit. I thought I may as well look at all of my kind of heart print outfits out and enjoy them while it's Valentine's week. So I'll talk about what I was wearing yesterday first. Um, it's a nice top that I don't often wear, but whenever I wear it, I really enjoy wearing it. And it is a Megan Nielsen Sudley blouse. I've got the pattern somewhere here to show you. It's this pattern here. I've got the old version with the old size range, but I think the new version now has two size ranges. It might be from a 6 to a 20 and a 14 to a 30, so quite a good size range on this one. But it's a pattern for a woven blouse and dress with some really pretty details. It's got this little keyhole cutout detail, and what's clever about this one is it's reversible, so you can have that keyhole cutout with a little necktie, either at the front, like the model here is wearing, or you can wear it at the back too. It's also got an optional Peter Pan collar, and you can turn it into a dress with a gathered skirt. So it's a really pretty pattern. I've only made the blouse version to date and the version I was wearing yesterday was my Valentine's themed one. I'll put up a picture. I just wore it with a pair of ready to wear jeans. The version I made here um, was in this really pretty heart print tensile lawn fabric that I got from Somi Sunshine quite a while back. It's really beautiful fabric. It's the softest, floatiest fabric. I put a picture up on Instagram yesterday of me wearing this um, top to celebrate Valentine's Day and I did say it feels like I'm wearing a cloud with that fabric so it's really lovely. I'm not sure if it's still in stock at Semi Sunshine but if it is I will link it below. Um, but yeah it's quite a nice fun one. I went for the keyhole cutout with a necktie but I didn't add the Peter Pan collar and then for my version I lengthened the sleeves and I made them into full length sleeves and I added a little elastic channel to bring them in at the um, wrist and actually the new Sudley pattern, the re-released version with the extended size range because mine's only in extra small to extra large um, but the new version has a couple of extra details including an option to make a long sleeve version with an elasticated cuff so yeah it's a nice pattern with some nice options and I enjoyed wearing that yesterday. I didn't have a very exciting day so I felt a bit dressy for staying home and sorting out things like the laundry and the food shop wearing a nice blouse but I thought well it's Valentine Valentine's themed so it was nice to wear. And in terms of sizing, I make the smallest size on my version, which is for bust 34 inches, waist 26 inches, hips 36 inches. And that's my waist and hip, but my bust is two inches smaller. I'm a 32, but I do find with a drapey fabric, going slightly larger on the bust seems to be fine for me because I think it kind of drapes over your body so it doesn't look too oversized. So that's what I was wearing yesterday and that inspired me today to get another Valentine's themed um, outfit out and this time I'm wearing a dress and it's a jersey dress using this really cute heart print cotton jersey fabric that I got quite a while ago from First for Fabrics. It's really nice. I've worn this quite a lot actually. I wear it all year round not just for Valentine's Day and um, it's washed really well actually and lasted really well and this dress is a mashup of two different patterns. The top is this pattern here which is the Tilly and the Buttons Agnes top pattern which is a really nice simple jersey top pattern with a scoop neck and it's quite close fitting this one's got negative ease built into it I think in terms of sizing this one's in Tilly and Buttons old size range so it only goes up to a size UK 20 but I'll show you the line drawings it's quite a basic jersey top here with long sleeves and this is the top I used to make my dress this version here but you can also make these versions with a little bit of ruching on the front of the bodice or to make these more sort of voluminous sort of shoulder bits on the sleeves and it's quite a nice simple so the only fiddly bit is getting the neckline, the neckband inserted to lie flat. So I um, hacked this by turning it into a dress and I did that by I used the top of this part and then kind of stopped it here and then traced into the skirt of another pattern which is a pattern from this book here the Tilly and the Buttons stretch book and it's the Freya top and dress pattern. I'll show you the line drawings 
Um, I've shown you this pattern before. I like it a lot as a top with this neckline. But for this dress on Wayne today, I made the Agnes top and then I kind of traced the lines into this A-line skirt to make kind of a cute little jersey dress. And it's quite nice because it's for slightly milder weather, I guess, than the Freya dress, which comes up around your neck. So this one works quite well when it's getting a bit milder. Um, and then over the top, I've got a handmade cardigan, which is quite a new one. And I talked about this in my January makes video. And I'll put a link up to that if you haven't seen it already. Um, it was a hack of the downtown cardigan by All About Amy, but I won't talk about it too much because I talk about it in quite a lot of detail in my makes video. Um, but yeah, it's really nice and I'm getting a lot of wear out of it already. And I got a bit cold in the house. I came back from a run this morning and I was quite hot. And then I suddenly, you know, when you just suddenly go in from hot to cold and I suddenly realised I was quite chilly because I'd warmed down for my run. So it was quite nice to pop this on. It's keeping me nice and warm, but I'll put a picture up of what I'm wearing today. Oh, and I've even got today um, some little heart shaped uh, earrings in to continue the Valentine's Day theme. I know it isn't actually Valentine's Day today and it was yesterday, but I thought I may as well carry on wearing my heart print garments. And um, yeah, I mean, me and my husband don't do much to celebrate. We just give each other cards, but it makes me happy to wear the heart print. So <laughs> that's all right. So that's what I'm wearing today anyway. And um, that was a bit of a long intro, I feel. So let me move on to what I've been up to on the sewing front. So the first thing I've been sewing over the last week or two is something for my son. And um, if you watch my previous midweek sewing chat episodes, you'll know this year I've given sewing handmade knickers or panties a go. So first of all, I sewed some for me using the um, Tilly and the Buttons Iris knickers pattern, which is really comfy. I really enjoyed sewing them. And then I went on to sew some for my daughter. And for her, I used a free pattern, which is the mini acacia pants pattern by Megan Nielsen. And then I said to my son, would he be interested in me making some for him too? And he really liked the idea and he had a particular fabric that he fancied having some pants made out of. So you'll know I made a toile um, for him, if you've seen my previous videos. And when he tried it on, he wasn't quite sure on the fit and he decided he preferred his ready to wear pants instead, which is fine. So we thought maybe we could find another use for this fabric. So it's a leftover piece of fabric from a t-shirt I made him a year or two ago. And it's really cool. It's this cotton jersey fabric. And it's from Minerva and it's got a Where's Wally print on. So it's got all these giants on it and then lots of detail and you can find some of the Where's Wally characters. It's a really fun fabric. And we figured out that I had probably just enough left of it to squeeze out a pair of pyjama shorts for him and he really liked that idea. So we decided we'd use it for the pyjama shorts instead of for pants. So I've gone ahead and made him a pajama, pair of pyjama shorts, <coughs> excuse me, in this fabric. And to do that, I used a pattern I'd used a while ago for my daughter which is a free pattern and it is the walk the plank pajama bottoms pattern by patterns for pirates it's a pattern that's available for free for both adults and children and i'll link the pattern down below the kids version it's designed to be made in woven fabrics but i made it before for my daughter in a cotton jersey and it worked out just fine and it's quite a basic pajama bottoms pattern you can make it either sort of a sort of short a short shorts length a knee length or a, a full sort of length and it's got an elasticated waist that goes in quite nicely. So I whipped those up for him. So it's quite interesting in terms of sizing, actually. I kind of measured him up and then his, his measurements seem to show him as an age six, but he's actually eight. So I thought I'd go with the age eight and just see how they came out. But actually, when I looked at the amount of fabric I had left, it was going to be a real squeeze to fit the pattern pieces onto the fabric. So what how the pattern pieces come with this pattern, I think I've got it here somewhere. Is you do, is there's one piece for each leg so you don't have a side seam on the outer seam there's just one wrap around piece and you sew each piece and then you sew them together so it's quite a simple pattern with just two well one pattern piece um and you cut two of them one for each leg and then you sort of turn over the top with elastic in but there wasn't enough space to cut those full um whole leg size pieces on the fabric so i had to cut the pattern pieces in half and end up having to shrink them a little bit um, just because of the amount of fabric was left and I had to shorten them in a bit from the knee length version too. So I was thinking, oh, are they going to end up a bit small? But that was all the fabric I had to play with. So I thought, well, I'll give it a go. And actually they came out just fine. And I found they came out with quite a lot of room in them. And I found that actually there's quite a lot of excess fabric in the size eight for him. So yeah, I, I think actually sizing down would have been fine. But anyway, here are the pair as they came out and they're really nice actually. I'm really happy with how they turned out and he's really pleased with them. And then I added a little label at the back, um, just using some soft ribbon I had left over from something something else. I just sort of zigzagged that on the back, just um, so he knows which way around they go. But yeah, they're really nice, I think, and really jolly. And I ended up shortening them a little bit because the knee length version looked like it was going to come up below the knee on him. So definitely they're on the generous size, this pattern I found. 
and he was so pleased with them that he asked me whether Minerva still st sold any other Where's Wally um, fabrics and any, any other different prints because he quite fancied maybe another pyjama set with a top and bottom. And we had a look on the Minerva website and they do still sell a few other different prints and the one he chose, this really cool print I think, it is a space print. So we ordered this and it came really quickly um, and it's really fun I think, it's got lots of rockets and aliens and again Where's Wally characters to spot, lots to look at on this fabric. And we ordered enough to make him a t-shirt and pyjama bottom set. So this time I was able to make the pyjama bottoms um, with, without having to kind of manipulate the pattern piece and cut them in half to make sure they fast fit in the fabric. So I had plenty of fabric, which is nice. And this to my size down, I think I went for a size six, an age six. And actually that's come out just fine. So if you're using the walk the plank pyjamas um, pattern, I definitely recommend going with the measurements and not with the age, um, which I guess probably one should anyway. But it's just good to know that actually it does come up on the large size. So here is his second pair. This one hasn't got the seam down the side, it's just wrap around. And again, I added a little label at the back so he knows which way around they go. So he's been wearing these, um, well, he's been wearing them ever since I made them. I actually finished sewing them when he was at Cubs last week. And I, I don't, the only thing I hadn't done was check the length on him. And he got home from Cubs and I checked the length and he was like, yep, sew them now, mommy. I want to wear them tonight. So <laughs> that was quite nice. I kind of had to get them done really quickly for him just then so he could wear them that evening, which is always, I think, a success. So that is the pyjama bottoms. And then here's the little t-shirt I made. Now, this t-shirt I made using another free pattern and it is the ABB Kids Tee, which I think stands for anything but basic kids tee. Another free pattern, this one's by DIBY Club, which I think stands for Do It Better Yourself Club. They're obviously a fan of the acronym. Is that the right word? I think so. <laughs> but I'll link that pattern down below as well. It's a really nice, simple t-shirt pattern. Um, it comes in a, a sort of a regular width and also a narrow width, um, a slim fit, I think they call it. And I find this one, funnily enough, whereas the weight, whereas the, um, whereas the walk the plank pajama bottoms come up really large, I find the ABB tee comes up on the small size. So for my son on this one, I cut a size 10, um, an age 10. And so it seems crazy that he's got an age six pajama bottoms and an age 10 pajama top, but I guess different pattern brands have different sizing. And this is a nice fit on him. It's not too big and it's not too small. It's yeah, just right. <laughs> um, so yeah. It comes together really nicely as t-shirt and I added this little optional patch pocket you can add. I add a little patch pocket with a little alien um, alien sitting on it. I thought that's quite cute. So he's quite pleased with the pocket. And again, I added a little label on the back just using this nice soft ribbon just to make it easy for him to tell which way around to wear it. So he's got a nice little matching pyjama set. I did twin um, needle stitching on all the um, cuffs and bottoms and things. And um, yeah, it was really nice to be able to whip something up for him in fabric that he really loves. And it's really nice, soft cotton jersey. So I'll link it down below. There's also a navy blue colorway of this too. But I do think the black space print's quite cool. I haven't got a picture of him um, wearing these yet. He does want to, me to take a picture of him wearing them. So hopefully I'll be able to take a picture of him wearing these and share it in my um, February makes video, which will be coming out in a few weeks time. It was nice to be able to make something for him. So that's my first thing I've been up to. I also forgot to mention in my sewing chat last week, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, I was making a face mask for my sister because I'd made some for her before and I wasn't sure if she liked them or not. And then she mentioned that she did really like them. So I made one more and I've given that to her and she was really pleased with it. And she did send me a picture of her wearing it, but I'm not sure if she'd be too keen on me putting that picture up. So I'll just show you a um, picture of it um, on a flat lay just so you can see how it turned out. I use this really pretty... Um, Liberty floral Tana lawn fabric. So I think it's a really pretty mask. And the pattern I use for this mask is the um, 3D face mask pattern. And I used a tutorial that's on Instagram. It's a video tutorial by Stitch Odyssey. And I'll link that down below. It's a really great um, video, really easy to follow how to make that mask. And she quite likes that style. So that's another little mini um, selfless sewing project I did. So as well as sewing for my son and my sister, I've also been doing a little bit of sewing for myself and I've been working on um, this pattern here, the Plateau Joggers pattern by Closet Core Patterns. And I've got this pattern and also the other pattern that kind of, they go in a collection together. It's called the Montreal Collection, which is the Mile End Sweatshirt. And I made a Mile End Sweatshirt a few weeks ago in a really lovely lilac fleece back sweatshirting fabric that I got from uh, Minerva. And I talk all about that sweatshirt again in my January makes video, if you fancy seeing that. And I've worn it loads and really enjoyed wearing it and the fabric is so cosy. And I had a decent amount of fabric left over from that. And then Minerva had one of their 20% um, off days. So I thought I'd order just a bit more fabric, the amount I needed to make a matching pair of joggers to go with that sweatshirt. 
and I'm midway through sewing these joggers. Well, actually, maybe more than midway through. I pretty much just got the um, ankle cuffs to attach and to figure out how, how long I want them. But I'll show you a little sneak peek of how they've been going. And it's been a really fun pattern to put together, actually. So here they are. So I've made them using this lovely lilac fabric and I've got ribbing um, for the top band. I'm going to use ribbing for the ankle cuffs too, just to make, because it's quite bulky fabric. I thought the actual fabric on the wet waistband might be a bit too bulky once it's gathered in by the elastic. But it's a really pretty fabric and it's been a lovely pattern to follow. I find closet course instructions really great. There's so much detail. For example, um, at the bottom of the pocket, they recommend you sew a little bar tack to um, secure it. And they say in the pattern, if your machine struggles with sewing bar tacks, there's a couple of other options and these are what you can do. And I found that really useful, actually, because my machine, it's one of the only things it does struggle with. It really doesn't like sewing bar tacks, particularly on bulky fabric. So it's really nice to find another option. So I've got a quite a neat option, I think, with a bit of top stitching to hold it in place there. But there are lots of lovely little details. You can do some twin needle stitching on the pockets. And the pockets are really interestingly constructed. So you've got a side seam here and it stops here. And this sort of back, um, the back bit of the pattern sort of hugs around. So you don't have a little side seam here, which I think is quite clever. And it was quite fun to construct and game together really well. This is my pair in progress and I'm really enjoying sewing it. And um, hopefully I'm planning to finish that this week so that they'll be ready to wear while the weather's still quite cold. But yeah, it's been a nice pattern to sew and I'm quite happy with the sizing. I went based on my hips measurement for this pattern, which is what the pattern advises. And it's come out nicely and the legs are definitely a bit more roomy than they are on my other favourite joggers pattern, which is the Hudson Pants pattern. And that works really well for fabrics like this fabric which hasn't got too much stretch in. I think having a slightly roomier leg is great for a fleecy backed fabric. So yeah, I'm really enjoying sewing these. I'm looking forward to finishing them and having my matching loungewear set. And once I have finished those joggers and I know how long I want them to be, um, I'll make sure I share in my February makes vlog the sizing adjustments I made and how I found they went and what, you know how much I needed to add to the length and that sort of thing. So I think that's always handy to know what adjustments of people have made to patterns to make them work for them. So I'll be sharing that all once those are finished. And then my next thing I would like to get sewn while the weather is still quite chilly outside is one more Mylen sweatshirt. Because I've been wearing my lilac one a lot. I really love it. So I thought I'd make one more and enjoy it while the other weather is still chilly. So I'm planning to make the same version as I made for my lilac version, which is this one at the top here, view A. So it's quite a nice um, basic, um, slightly oversized sweatshirt with these drop shoulders. It's got a sort of round neck, it's got these lovely arm darts, um, which are a really cool feature, I think. And it's got these cool sort of diagonal slanted seams to the front. Um, yes, yeah, so really nice details on it. It's got back yoke too. And I really enjoyed sewing my first one. So I'm really looking forward to sewing another one of those. And I got some fabric along with the extra fabric I needed for my plateau joggers. I got some more fabric when Minerva had their 20% off day. I got another colourway of the Mind the Maker fleece back sweatshirt, which is so cosy, which I really love. And you might have seen this already if you've seen one of my previous vlogs where I shared this. I can't remember which one it was, but it's this beautiful um, sage green coloured fleece back sweatshirting fabric. And I've got the matching ribbing too. And yeah, I'm enjoying my pastels for sweatshirts at the moment. So I'm really looking forward to getting that sewn up. And I'm hopefully going to start cutting that one out this week. And I'm planning to make the same adjustments as I made for my first version, which is I'm going to lengthen the arms by one inch. Um, and I'm also going to lengthen the bodice by three inches which seemed like quite a lot to me when I made the pattern adjustments for my first version. But when I held up the pattern pieces, it looked like the sweatshirt was going to come up really on the cropped side and I didn't want it really cropped. So I thought I'd add in the three inches and then I'd sew it all up. And then if it was a bit too long, I could always crop it a little bit at that stage before adding the bottom band. But I actually found I needed the full three inches, which seems like a lot. I often do lengthen bodices because I do have quite a long body, but not often by that much. So I thought in a moment I would get out my pattern pieces for the Mile End sweatshirt and I'd show you how I made that adjustment to lengthen the bodice because of the slanted seams it's not as easy as just adding in a chunk with straight seams and a couple of people had asked me how I did it and if it was tricky so I thought I'd just show you my pattern pieces to show how I made those seams um, stay at a good angle with adding in that extra length. So I'll go and set up my sewing table in a bit and show you that in case you find that useful but I'm really looking forward to sewing this pattern again because it's a really fun one to sew. There are a few extra pattern pieces and a few average, sweat, average sweatshirts which makes it a bit fun um, and a bit different so yeah I'm looking forward to that. So I'm hoping this week that I'll finish my plateau joggers and make a start on my Mile End sweatshirt in the sage green colourway of the fleece back sweatshirt fabric. And then next week is half term and my children are going to be off school. So I don't generally get quite as much sewing done when they're off school. 
I usually do my sewing in the day. I don't often sew in the evening these days. When I started sewing, um, my children were a bit smaller and they're both at home or back and forth to preschool. I didn't do any sewing in the day and often in the evening I'll get my sewing stuff out and I'd like sew like a demon because I was really enjoying it. And as they've got a bit older and they've gone to school and I've had a bit more time to myself, I do prefer to fit a bit of sewing in in the day and then often on the evening I'll probably chill on the sofa with my husband and either do some knitting or do a jigsaw puzzle or something like that. So yeah, often in half term, I don't have the time to sew in the day, so not as much sewing will get done. So I probably won't be on next week for a um, sewing chat video, just because I won't have so much to share next week and my children will be around and probably making quite a lot of noise dashing around the house. But I have got a couple of little plans and one of them is to start researching for a challenge that's happening on YouTube, which you probably have heard about. And it's the second year it's run and it is so frugal. So last year it was called Frugal Frocks. This year it's been changed to the hashtag of so frugal 22 and it's being run by um, Ruan, who's the Yorkshire Sew Girl, and Sam, who's Frugalissima, and I'll link them both below. You're probably already subscribed to their channels, but in case you aren't. And I'm joining in with it, along with a load of other people on YouTube, where we film a vlog sharing what we're going to do. And it's a challenge where you basically have to choose a free pattern that's readily available and then choose a fabric from your stash. So you're not able to, you're not allowed to buy a new pattern or a new fabric. It has to be a free pattern, a fabric from your stash. You have to sew it up in the month of March and then everyone will reveal them on Instagram at the end of March. And there was a lot of fun last year. Last year it was just dresses. This year they've extended it to any free pattern. So yeah, I'm going to plan to next week, start researching what I might like to make. So I'll be doing my video. I think it's um, the 17th of March. I could be wrong. I'll put it up the date if I've got the wrong dates. We're all lined up in a schedule to do our videos so I'm going to start researching that in the evenings next week and having to think about free patterns and also what fabric I've got in my stash which is fairly limited so it might be a good challenge. Um, so that is my plan for next week so um, watch this space for more on So Frugal coming up but that should be a lot of fun. So I think what I'll do is I'll finish this bit of the video now and I'll go and set up in the other room and I'll show you my Mylan sweatshirt adjustment for lengthening the um, body of the sweatshirt pattern. So I'll see you in a moment. Bye! Hello, so I'm set up in the other room now and I've got my Mylan sweatshirt pattern piece out and this is the front pattern piece and this is the back pattern piece and as you can see the kind of seams wrap around the front and create this cool angular seam down the front which they call a style line. Um, so yeah, I've added three inches into both my pieces um, but because it's not a straight forward side like this, well, this side's nice and straightforward to add in the length, but this side's not as straightforward. So when I cut it, you'll see it kind of ended up with coming at this angle here and that angle up here. So what I've done is I've added in the three inches and I've added an extra piece down here just to create a new line that sort of starts at the right place at the top and finishes at the right place at the bottom, but just has a little bit more there. Um, and for this piece, I had to do the opposite because I had it too much going in at the top here. So I've added in a bit more along here just to give it a nice clean line that starts in the right place at the top and ends in the right place at the bottom and creates this really nice style line. So hopefully that is helpful to see. Hello again. I hope you found it useful to see those adjustments I made to the Mylan sweatshirt pattern to the front and back pieces to um, lengthen them by the three inches. I'm really glad I did lengthen them by those full three inches. It did seem like a lot when I was lengthening them, but actually it's brought it down to a really nice comfortable level for me to wear that makes it really cosy and yeah I'm really glad I did lengthen them by that amount and if you want to hear more about me talking about the sizing I used on that Mylan sweatshirt or how I find the pattern generally and see some pictures of that one and me wearing it that is all in my January makes video so you might have already seen it um, but I'll link it down below in the description in case you haven't so yeah, that's my Mylan sweatshirt and I'm really looking forward to cutting out my second one the sage green colorway and getting that one sewn up but today, in terms of my sewing plans, I think I'm going to finish off my plateau joggers. In a moment, I'm going to get my sewing machine out. I'm going to try them on again and check the length because I lengthen the pattern pieces by quite a lot just to be on the safe side. So I'm going to see if I need to take any off and then add on the ankle cuffs and then they'll be all finished. And I'm really looking forward to having them to wear. I think they're going to be really snuggly and cosy and perfect for um, evenings in at this time of year. So yeah, I'm hopefully going to finish those today. So I thought before I go, I'd share with you about what videos I've got coming up. So I'm planning on releasing a video this Saturday morning as usual. And this Saturday, I decided to do a different type of video. I thought I'd talk about a particular pattern company and the makes I'd made 
and also a few other bits. So I've chosen to talk about Sew Over It London. So I'm going to be sharing all the patterns I've sewed by Sew Over It London and sharing my makes. I'm going to also talk about a couple of patterns I've got in my pattern stash by Sew Over It London that I haven't sewn and talking about why I haven't sewn them to date. And I'm also going to share a couple of patterns I'd like to sew by Sew Over It London but I don't yet have in my stash. So hopefully it should be an interesting vlog and I'd love it if you would join me for that one. I'll be releasing on Saturday morning as usual. And then next week, like I mentioned, I probably won't be popping on for a midweek sewing chat because my children are on half term. So I think my next midweek sewing chat will be in two weeks time, which I think will be Wednesday, the 2nd of March, if I'm correct, um, which seems crazy that we're going to be into March so soon. I do feel like this year's whizzing by. I don't know whether you feel the same. But yeah, that'll be my next sewing chat video. So thank you so much for joining me today for this sewing chat. As ever, it's been lovely to pop on and chat to you guys. If you've enjoyed the video, I would love it if you would give it a thumbs up as ever. And if you're new to my channel, then thank you so much for watching. I would love it if you would consider subscribing um, to hear more about my sewing chat, sewing plans, makes, all of that sort of thing. And if you press the bell um, icon too, that means you'll be notified when my future videos do come out. So thank you again to everyone for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will hopefully see you again soon. Have a great day. Bye.